It's Joe from Nielsen Boxing. I'm here with a 2023 Mark Nielsen. How are you, Mark? I'm very well, thank you very much. Um, all refreshed after the Christmas New Year break and looking to get back to it. Yeah, it looks like it's quite a big break, but um, I'm sure it goes very quickly. That flies by. You know, the, the, the phones go quiet between Christmas and New Year, and I think apart from Christmas Day, there's still matching being done for our up-and-coming show. So we say it's quiet. There's still an awful lot going on, as you all know yourself, and with Kyle doing match, matching for our shows in March. But you know, before you know it, it's on us, and we're, we're sorting weigh-ins and opponents and opponent changes and whatever. So, uh, yeah, a little fly-by. But, yeah, it's a bit of a, a little bit of a break. But um, so we'll be back on it before you know it. Yeah, the joys of modern technology. You can work even when you're up a mountain as well. Absolutely. Perfect. So should we start off by running through the cards of 2022? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Yeah, no better place to start than obviously 26th of March in Swindon. Well, I think at that point back in March, if we sort of like go back and look at the year, we were we were normally doing sort of three, four shows a year. We'd come into the beginning of last year. I think we were talking about having half a dozen shows, stepping up a little bit, spreading ourselves around, and you know, uh, our opening show on our on our home home show in our hometown where it all started um 26th of march picked it all off and we look back at the the whole year now and it's entirety and it's just got pinch yourself how far we've come in such a short period of time but you know we could we could talk about you know all the shows individually of course which has brought us to where we are but great start actually wasn't it uh beginning of the year max mudway he's fought you know i think by one of his um fights has been all on our on all our cards he's one of our guys Works really well with us. Got a great team behind him with Pittman, and that was a, a step up for him. He'd done his apprenticeship, but, um, bought the journeyman, done his round, um, and now we were stepping him up. We bought um, Tio Vizikasin from Greece, who was a uh, winning record, as you know, had some decent wins and decent scalps on his record. So it was a step up, and it was the first eight rounder as well for Max. But yeah, so it's um, and we said to Max, you see that, and as everyone knows, you, you go into these kind of fights. This is it now. You, you've done your apprenticeship. Now you've now you've got to step up and let's see what you've got. And you've got to get through these guys. And he did in emphatic style. You know, first round stoppage. He just walked through him. He, you know, he's just uh, brutal, brutal for Max. Great following as always. And there's the, just the a place erupted. What a brilliant fight. I mean, you know, good, good on Max. And uh, he's got um titles ahead for him for sure. But that was a, a great main event for us. And obviously we had um Aaron Sutton as well, Danny Shannon in the uh, for the vacant uh, middleweight, um, super middleweight, uh, sorry middleweight uh, Southern Area title. Great fight as well that one. Um, you know we know Aaron, we're turning to the Sanagas, and we, we we've worked with him a few times. But uh, Danny Shannon coming over from um, Essex or Ken, uh, Essex, I think, brought a massive crowd with him as well. So that you know we could great, great, great fight. You know and. Fourth round stoppage for Aaron. It just looked really, it was a big step up for him as well because Danny Sanders has been around a bit. And um, he really was really composed, really calm. And I thought he looked good. You know, the better the opponent, the better the Aaron Sutton. So I think he's uh, defended it again since. And I think they're moving him up to bigger titles now. But, um, you know, those two, two of the main sort of main fights on the card were um, really good fights, really entertaining for the crowd. And it was uh, you know, a good start to 2022. Yeah, one hell of a way to start a year. Um, and then obviously we moved into York Hall for the first time. Yeah, well, by that time we've obviously sort of made arrangements, made contact with um, Warren Boxing Management, you know, led by Alfred Warren and all the guys, you know, um, Freddie, Bobby, Sonny, and and their big stable of boxers. And it was our first first London show. Well, I've said it sort of many times before. You know, it's like it's iconic. It's, it's that, that word is always linked to York Hall. Every boxer wants to fight there and if they retire without fighting there they're, they're sort of it's one of their regrets as a promoter to be able to put on a show there and promote there was a massive tick in the box for us uh it was and it went brilliantly well you know we had a some great fighters on there we had a great turnout um it was just we sort of picked up the model our fight town brand which has been sort of working so well for us locally in the southwest you know we've done you know swindon for you know a decade and um, Gloucester and Bracknell and lots of local shows. And then uh, we go into London and we pick it up and move it over there and it worked fantastically. And, you know, what a main event as well. Jack McGann, um, John Brennan, John Brennan, really good, 
good, capable super welter, got some good title fights on his on his record, winning record. Zach McGann with a celebrity following in the ex-MMA. You know, can he just turn it over and move it into boxing? Well, he's doing it. And what a great fight. You know, stopping, getting wobbled himself, actually, because John Brennan got a dig on him as well. Getting, getting wobbled himself, but turning it round and um, getting John Brennan down twice in the fourth round for a stoppage. So it was a great, great main event. But also we had some really good 50-50s on the card as well. You know, Benuki and D, Gordon D. John. Um, and it was just a great, great first card for us at your call. You know, we, we look back at that one and think, yeah, that's a big tick for the year. It's a big, I mean, the, the 2022 is a, a year of an awful lot of firsts, to be honest, Jared. So, and that, that was a great one for us. Um, you know, working with a whole new different set of people over there. You know, the, the, the board officials, the managers, the trainers, the boxers. You know, there's no one on that card we'd worked with um, before, so they're all new to us. Um, and it's all worked fantastically well for us. I mean, you say a year of firsts, then we move over to uh, April 22nd and the first yeah. televised show. That just shows the sort of the ambition of it, doesn't it? You know, we've, we come into the year doing one of our sort of twins in our home show, then we do a, a Your Call, but in a very, you know, in a few weeks later, we're doing a massive show and our first one on Box Nation. And that's a pinch yourself moment. That's where we always wanted to be. We always thought we were good enough, we're big enough. We'd been investing in the production, putting on quality fights, getting really, you know, bigger and bigger numbers, sort of walking through the door. So we, we knew we were ready for it. And uh, working with the Warrens and, and Alfie Warren and the guys it enabled us to open that door for us. So working with them, we managed to put on some absolutely brilliant fights as well. And it was, you know, I look back now and I still watch that sometimes looking back on it and just having a view of the production. And it looked as good as any of the, the big, uh, big main broadcasters, I thought. You know, Ashley Sexton and Igbit Negminiani from South Africa for a, an IBF international title was a really credible main event. Really great fight, you know. Cervello just stopped him in the fifth. He was just too good for him. And I think Ashley, as good as he's been and the great record he had, I think 17-2-2, I think, or 16-2-2 at the time. Really good record. I think it was just a bit too late for him. Um, it was just a bit of a step up and Sabello's on the, the ascendancy, but you know, absolutely brilliant. Of course, not forgetting Dean Dodd, Reese Belotti in the southern area. Now Reese Belotti is fought at sort of a really high level. So he just wanted to, to start again, take a have a crack at a southern area and get in, and get the ball rolling again. Dean Dodge fought for Southern Area before. Big opportunity for him on Box Nation. Great backstory. You know, he's got he's had some Troubles, uh, and you know, made homeless, sleeping in his car, and you know, this is a great opportunity for him to earn a couple of quid and get himself noticed. And absolutely, yeah, great fight. Beast blot his class, just showed through in the end, you know, and stopping Dean in um, uh, seven, I believe. But you know, the card again was full of some really, really great 50 50s, you know, Underwood and Jacobs, you know, the um. Bo Reynolds making a debut, Luke Lydia making a debut. Great card. Went down really well. Fox Nation were really pleased. The numbers were really good. We had a load of people in there. The production was good. It's our first ever televised show. And it just went brilliantly. Great team, great people, great boxing. Crowds loved it. Fox Nation loved it. And we're talking to them more about shows this year. No, definitely. I think um, it really was a pinch yourself moment. And we've obviously used that as an example when having discussions with broadcasters moving forward which yeah. we can get into later. Um, yeah. We'll move quickly on to one that's a bit close to my heart and close to me as well, which is the Bracknell card. We saw the introduction of fighters like Finley Judd. We saw Luke Pearson, Nathan Howes, and obviously Charles Frankham as well. Yeah, it was a little more good development card, that for us. So there was no title fights on that, but it was a good 10-fight card in Bracknell as well. So, yeah, not, not as far to travel for you, mate, for a change, eh? <laughs> but, um, you know, the local... A lot of local guys on there. Charles Frankham was the first time we had him on one of our shows. And, um, you know, he comes from a family like ourselves with a, you know, big boxing pedigree. So it was great working with him. His, his dad and the family and stuff was great. You know, and then also sign of the confidence and the quality of our shows that Queensbury are allowing us to put their fighters on our shows um, as well. But, you know, Jordan Flynn, that was an absolute massive ticket. Spindley Chad, we had, you know, the big... Um, Light Heavyweight, uh, Bryce Goodridge, Chris Davis, you know, local Andre Grant on there. You know, so we had some um, really decent, really decent fights. A bit of a development card. Everyone fortunately came through it, um, came th fortunately came through it sort of unscathed. There's a couple of scares, a couple of wobbles. But yeah, really, really good card for us. And not too far to travel home for you for once, mate. 
<laughs> yeah, it was, it was nice to get home early. Um, another development card in Swindon, but with again with some really standout names. Um, we obviously had the introduction to Tosin. We had D. Allen on there with a emphatic knockout as well, and S. K. Yeah, we had some some really good fights on there. Yeah, you know, big um, Oxford's big uh, heavyweight Gary Sweeney, who's sort of like you know knocking everyone out and been out inactive for a little while. Um, he, he he came back, he made his mark, he's back in it. We obviously had some of the local guys on there. Um, but you said, like you said, the introduction of, of Tosin Gajawa, uh, one of our guys, promoted by us, Nigerian knockout specialist, um, great amateur pedigree, uh, some Nigerian fights knocking everyone out. But you never know the quality of the opposition when they're fighting foreigners. But he's over here now, based here, um, and uh, promoted by us. And he's now moving that over into that that sort of knockout and that that really entertaining style onto the um, UK opponents. You know, chucking him in with Pucci, and Pucci's been around as we everyone knows. You know, hundreds of fights, and um, you know he had him down a couple of times and nearly had the, nearly had him stopped if, if it wasn't for Pucci's experience. So it's just like right, this guy is the real deal. He's actually got it. And as you said, D Allen in there as well with a fourth round stoppage. Um, and uh, you know, I think she's like a WBC international. She's she's got now, so that was a really great one for her. So you know, you could see the talent and the, you know, the, and, and you know what a strong boxer. You know, but they said there's some some new boxers for us on that card, the development card. Still sold out the venue. Um, you know, and there's some good ones. You know, some ones to watch on there for sure, mate. So we move on to the first of July, and I'm going to have to go through the list here because this is actually one of my favourite cards. Yeah. We have got James Hannigan from Queensbury. We've got some surprises with Bo Reynolds and Kieran Flanagan. We've got Ernie Rutherford, who pretty much filled out the venue. Finley yeah. Judd, who was an animal. We had a 50-50 with Dujon Maycock. We had the return of Tosin. I mean, that's one hell of a development card. Oh, isn't it? It's just a great um, great card as well. You know, Tosin versus Zoroff. What an entertaining yeah. fight. This guy comes over here with a, with a winning record. And Tosin just sort of plays with him and just what an entertaining, you know, you can see the, the young energy, the power, and he's got a lot of work to do. You know, he's obviously had these Nigerian fights and hasn't benefited from the UK um, training, if you like, but um, they're getting the grips with him now. But he's got a certainly one to watch. What an entertaining fight. And like D. John Maycock, great, 50-50, you know, could have gone either way, but... Um, you know, only a couple of points in it on the scorecards. But yeah, that was a really good fight. Like I said, you can go through them one by one. It's really, only Rutherford just brings an army with him and is really entertaining uh, to watch. Really good skilled boxer. But, as you know, James Hennigan, like I said, another Queensby boxer on the card. Bo Reynolds, Kieran Flanagan, perhaps the upset of the year for us as well um, uh, on his debut, losing against Luke Fash. That's not supposed to happen. But if you're not, you know, if you're good enough, you should be able to beat these guys. So, Bad night at the office for Kieran, but you know, certainly be back. But yeah, absolutely great card. Nine fights, York Hall, absolutely full up to the brim. And that is absolutely fantastic in that place. Love that card. And then we go into what is supposed to be a summer break. But I actually remember being sat on a beach and my phone pinging off saying, Yep, Liverpool has been approved. <laughs> no. And it was just like, uh, I remember the conversations like, what do, you, what do you think about a show in Liverpool? Liverpool? Okay. Where? Well, we'll have to find a venue and and that's it. The wheels go in motion. And obviously, Jack McGann, a guy is uh, uh, managed by the Warrens, is a Liverpool guy. So, yeah. And then ended up being on a on a Friday night on a rooftop at the famous Shankly Hotel in Liverpool. And just, you know, great. You know, who'd, who'd have thought at the beginning of the year we'd be doing a rooftop in Liverpool? But, you know, stick him in in a really good 50-50 fight with Kaplaukas, who's he's a tough guy. Very rarely gets flawed, very rarely, you know, it's a couple of years ago since he's got stopped, you know, really experienced guy. And Jack McGann, after a good sort of like back and forth, stops him in the fifth to show that his quality. And, you know, they had the local Liverpool crowd, you know, lifting the roof off. But we all, it was great to have, because of the connections we've got now in Nielsen Boxing as we're moving forward and uh, the reputation we're getting, we're going into these new towns and there doesn't seem to be any problem getting to find local people to work with us, you know. So, you know, Michael Braithwaite, Adam Carberry, Brad Strand, um, uh, Leon Williams, you know, all local guys filling in a nice Liverpool card for us, full of locals, you know, filled up the, the rooftop. Um, great, 2nd of September, back with a bang. 
unbelievable card, and I'm hoping back mm-hmm. to Liverpool at some point this way uh, this year. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, let's hope so. I think we've got we're in discussions about that. Got to get the right date, the right fight. But I think Jack McGann in a big main event title fight, we're certainly seeing back in Liverpool this year. And then carrying on in September, um, back in Swindon, and personally, my introduction to Shabs and Johnny Ward as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Johnny Ward's like uh, one of you know one of our guys managed by us, and he's just uh, got titles all over him. He's just just a just a puncher. Just wants to um, fight anyone. I think he was like three and zero at the time, and. The trouble is, he's three and oh, three KO with two KOs, but he had the, the first one down a couple of times in the first. Nobody wants to fight him. It's really difficult to find opponents for him. So we're having to um, to bring sort of durable people in. You know, Roger Lee, his trainer, sort of, you know, says, well, we actually want to bring durable people in because we want him to get the rounds. And as Johnny says, well, I'll, I'll do the rounds, but they can't. Not Johnny all over. It's just, you know, and he's just got one way. He just wants to move forward. He's strong. He's powerful, and he just demolishes people. But you know, he's he's, he's great, isn't he? Also, we had uh, Tosin Kajara on again. Um, first point uh, win, actually, I think for him. But I think he damaged his hand in the, the second round, and that sort of slowed him down. So it was quite a sensible, mature. After we'd seen the sort of the excitement and the volatility of him in his previous fight, he sort of just a bit more of a grown up, mature attitude. A bit, you can see his hand is is injured. Um, I think he caught him on an elbow or something like that. And then just, just took it steadily and just went back to boxing and the stuff, but still dominated and won, you know, uh, five or six rounds, I think. Um, um, but yeah, absolutely. And and, and Jab, you know, he'd been out with a, an injury himself for the, the, the previous year. But, um, you know, he's entertaining, isn't he? The Afghan warrior comes in with a big, big tribal sort of skin coat that he comes in on, massive crowd he brings with him, raises the roof. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, stops Jake Pollard in two, doesn't really get stopped. And he had him in trouble from the off. So, yeah, absolutely. Good introduction to to, to, to Shabs and Johnny for you. But, you know, great show overall. Yeah. And then I think this is sort of the point where we really started pushing with the production. Mm -hmm. Um, Back at York Hall, main event of Dujon Martin and a stacked undercard yet again. Yeah, Dujon Martin, probably, if you were to ask me, probably my favourite fight of the year. Now, there were bigger fights, more titles on the line, more crowds in the room and whatever than do John Martin. But for me as a boxing fan, that was my favourite. Sat there, toe-to-toe battle for the Southern area over 10 rounds and just loved it. What a great fight. I mean, very close. You know, it's difficult. So you wouldn't want to be a, wouldn't want to be scoring this fight. Uh, do John obviously nicked it. Don't think there was any complaints about that. But if anyone called it a draw, I don't think anyone would have argued about it. It was that sort of um, that sort of decision. I think the other, you know, when Martin, it was announced when Martin, you know, his corner weren't massively disappointed. You know, I think I don't think he would have been, but it just does a lot of great 50-50 fight, you know. Um, and Jackson Onyani as well, 50-50 four and zero versus a four and zero, which is what we want to do more of, isn't it? Just putting more of these 50-50s on the card. But you know, I think uh, it was an introduction to Nicola Nicola Bark. Um, Fermi Python, super lightweight, probably fighting for titles this year. Probably Jacobs out again. You know, we had um, some really good fighters. We had um, you know, George Ellis, his debut on the card. We've got to deal with him on all the London shows this year. Uh, managed by Simon Leg, he's going to be a, a, a real prospect. So, uh, yeah, really great card. We had a few spoilers there for the uh, awards, which we'll get to later. Uh, oh, one okay. that really for me on that one was uh, the Nicola Bark one. I see Vader since has actually gone undefeated. So it didn't seem he's, like it at the time, but I think that's a big win. And it's a big win. Vader's very experienced and just, you know, she comes to she comes to win. Um, very credible, very experienced. She's got a couple of scalps on her, her record as well, you know. So, you know, very good. That's a really good win for Nicola Bark. You know, it's a great, great team. Um, easy to work with. Um, brings a good crowd with her and can back it up in the ring as well. So, um, yeah, it's absolutely a um, Good win for her and uh, be interesting to see what we can do with her this year. I mean, just after that, then we might as well go for the first show in Oxford for 60 years. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's only down the road from a sort of Swindon base, but, you know, you don't have a massive amount of boxes sort of come out of there. And then, you know, boxing is not a big thing, but you wouldn't know it from the show that you put on. The Sam Stadium, and I said that the, the city hasn't had a boxing show, as you said, for, for 60 years. We, 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 it's, we should have had a bigger venue. You know, we 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 were we were sold out and could have 
sold out twice the size. It's one of those that, you know, you book O2 and wish you'd had Wembley. It was that kind of situation. But uh, Jordan Flynn, the sort of the, the local favourite, sold hundreds of tickets himself, you know, and, and, and there's a card full of local Oxford boxers as well. So, you know, we were packed to the rafters in there and all the fights were great, didn't disappoint. You know, um, we're back in Oxford again this year. Certainly, um, bigger venue. I think we're looking at the ice rink, uh, which you know we'll get a couple of thousand in there this time. So, um, yeah, yeah, great, great to be there. And another first, another first for us, another first for the city. So, yeah, it's really great. And then we finish off our London cards. I know we've still got another one after, but um, with quite a quite a packed card full of some technical decisions, some knockouts, some draws, all sorts. Yeah, great, wasn't it? You know, um, so when it was Tommy Jacobs, uh, got an interesting bit of beef between these two and the, the main event. You know, probably good 50 50 small hall um, trade fight that one. It's just really, really good. Um, you know, the introduction to us again, we're working a lot of them, some new boxers on there as well. We got our Johnny Ward in there. Massive cut, unfortunately, against the um, garage, um, but he's still one of the, the go to the scorecards and they still win. I think it was only a matter of time and he would have had another stoppage. Um, if anything, it might make it easier to match him now he hasn't stopped someone. And, um, you know, working with a couple of other guys for the first time. But, you know, James Hawley with a massive knockout over Rin Wayne, which has gone viral now. Hundreds of thousands of views on that. Um, Louis Horn, you know, I think is a great talent. Harry Mullins, who we've got in title fights this year. So, yeah, really good London card. And then we finished the year as we started back in Swindon. Yeah, and it was just a great, you know, great start to the year, great finish to the year. A packed 11 fight card with some big main events. You know, Max Mudway in you know, his ring entrance and uh, he just raises the roof. And a lot of local favourites, you know, Jabs and we had back of the Jordan Flynn and Brad Towns and the Oxford guys back on it. I'd lost the guys who were on it. Local hero, George Lewis Roberts, El Gordito. Um, he, just, he just brings a monster crowd with him as well. But uh, great, great finish of the year. But also, um, Elizabeth Ashoba, we've signed a promotional deal with her, the Commonwealth Silver Medalist. It was her first outing in the UK, having a couple of fights in Nigeria. Um, and you can just see her quality. You know, the uh, the opponent sort of capitulated in the first round after she sort of fought a couple of power punches. You know, we'd seen, I'd seen uh, Elizabeth in the final, in the semi final at the Commonwealth. So I was up there and I saw that fight. You could see her quality there. And she, you know, she's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And because we're female boxing, um, I suspect, you know, we're going to be, you know, uh, looking at titles in the, uh, the very near future, I think, for her. No, really, really performance and a great way to end the year. Um, mm. I know we've had some announcements already, but should we run through the first two shows of this year? Yeah, sure. Um, 3rd of March, which is a massive one for a great start for this year. So 3rd of March, York Hall, uh, British and Commonwealth title fight for Kadimi and Ahmed. Um, this would be the fourth time they fought but each, each previous fight has been a humdinger so this is going to but we've got a Commonwealth title um, I think the Prince Patel have it and he got stripped of it so we're now able to fight for it so British and Commonwealth which is a great coup for us on a, a York Hall show um, another Southern Area Flyway Harry Mullins and Paul Roberts another, another great fight and we've got some other really good you know Billy Underwood Tom Brennan 50-50 fight for Southern Area Eliminator John Dujon um, Bo Reynolds is back. We've got really stacked that card. Um, where you know we had a sort of like a short list of about sixteen fights that we could sort of like trim down to to make ten really quality fights. So you know we'll have um, Johnny Ward will be back on there as well. A little Georgie Ellis as his first uh, run out in the year for us. Um, so it's a great start to the year. So um, let's say British and Commonwealth main event first first show of the year. We'll take that. Uh, it definitely shows in 10. And then we move a little bit closer. Yeah. Gloucester, Friday 10th. We're supposed to be having Max Mudway in a really big fight for an English eliminator. But got an injury. That's out. We'll have to move that back a couple of months, which is a, which is a big shame because it's his hometown as well. So he was obviously really looking forward to getting back in his hometown in front of his home crowd um, with a really big, big fight for him so he's absolutely devastated but this you know it's boxing these things happen but nonetheless we've still got a really big card anyway Brad Ingram local boy um made his homecoming fifth fight undefeated so far you know we're going to stick him on uh main event 
in a really tough fight. We've got a big year planned out for him. Uh, Jake, Jake Bannister, uh, Bruiserweight of ours, new signing, making a debut. Jabs Hadry, Gloucester, John Pittman fight back to Israel. Same gym as Max Mudway and Akeem Ellis Brown uh, back out. So, you know, that, 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 that roof will be raised. And of course, a lot of the local guys as well. We've got um, a lot of the Swindon guys, Lewis Roberts. You know, we've got Hereford's Liam O'Hare on there. Um, and of course, the two, our two Nigerian signings as well. Tosin, Elizabeth Ashova. You know, we've got, um, you know, that's going to be a stacked 12-fight card. Back in um, Gloucester, the first time since 2018. And when we were there, that was um, really the King Ellis Brown WBC youth title. You know, we had a you know, couple thousand in the GL1, and I expect we're going to do the same again. So, uh, yeah, really nice card back. Looking forward to it. Know the venue, know the town. And it's great to be back there after a little break. All right, it's great to be in another town as well. Um, yeah. We've obviously spoken about York Hall, which we're returning to this year. Um, I'm sure we'll have quite a few shows in Swindon as well. Gloucester. Um, I know we're going to hopefully go back to Oxford and potentially Liverpool. Anywhere else we're looking at for this year? Yeah, well, we're looking in within a couple of weeks after that. We're actually looking at um, Watford. We haven't done Watford before. There's a lot of boxes over that way. And, um, you know, we've got a really, I think we're putting together a really good card on that. Nicola Bart, Ernie Rutherford, Warren Nichols, Alfie Price. Uh, Lorenzo Grasso, uh, John Brennan's going to be on that card. We're just putting that together now. It all being announced probably next week. Um, hopefully, have um, some tight fights on there, some some fifty fifties. So um, that's going to be a really cracking card in another new venue for us. So uh, yeah, looking like a busy year. I mean, that first card we have in Liverpool that has TV written all over it. Yeah. Um, obviously, being on TV last year, what are the what are the hopes for this year of getting some sort of TV deal? I know we see a lot of streaming deals these days as well. So, yeah, well, to be honest, I'll be honest with you, the, the streaming doesn't really interest me as much. Um, I don't think there's the revenue in it. I don't think there's a the benefit. You've got to get, you know, obviously we want to get more eyeballs on the boxing as we can. I don't think there's any benefit to have, you know, three or four outlets all streaming it live on our show for sort of no return for the boxer. You know, I don't, I don't see the point. So we want to go on to sort of like main, mainstream TV if we can. Uh, when I say streaming, I just mean like on a some, some obscure YouTube channel or something like that, you know, and getting a couple of thousand views on YouTube. And I, I you know, go into the, the sort of the, box, the realms of sort of Box Nation and Eurosport, who we're also talking to, you know, you're different levels. You're talking hundreds of thousands of, of views and eyeballs on the, on the boxing. And we've, you know, there are some a lot of other sort of promoters out there, but you know, there's only a handful out of the forty odd UK promoters who've been on sort of main main TV. You know, we're up there now. We've done a Box Nation. We're in conversations again with Box Nation now for for this year. We're also in conversations with Eurosport. There's Middle East um, money that we're looking at, and so there's some really big opportunities up this year. Good opportunities for the boxers. Good opportunities for us. We always want to keep progressing and keep improving. You know, we're talking Gloucester, we're talking Watford, we'll be back in Liverpool, you know, other locations. If the, if the opportunity is there and the boxers are there, we'll do it. But, you know, we're, we're going places. And this year is going to be a really big, big year. Last year was huge for us. A lot of first, I would call it our breakout year. You know, we've been around for a while, we're developing and growing. And then last year, it sort of exploded for us. And I think that's what growth is going to continue this year. And the more we can get on TV, the better. So, uh, yeah, you know, just watch your space, but Fox Nation, Eurosport, Middle East money, lots of things happening behind the scenes. Brilliant. Um, Then if we can just sort of turn our attention to the year ahead, what kind of fights would you like to see this year? Maybe within our stables and maybe outside of that as well, within boxing itself? Well, in our, in our stables, obviously, we're developing quite a few boxes. We've got a lot of 4 and 0, 5 and 0, 6 and 0, 7 and 0. So these guys are all moving on quite nicely. You know, their their plans... Uh, last year, most of them come through sort of um, scathed. We're looking at title fights, certainly for these. The minimum is that we've got area title fights. We've got some international fights. Um, some of our guys might even be moving up to, to English. You know, for, for me, I want to have more British title fights, more Commonwealth title fights, more of the credible international fights on. You know, you've got people like um, Johnny Ward going to be fighting for titles for sure this year. Elizabeth Fashoba is going to be fighting for titles for sure this year. You know, and we've got like a great stable of boxers that's um 
you know, we're going to develop sort of uh, quite nicely for us, I think, over the course of the year. But you now we'll see. I don't want to sort of talk about too many different things too soon. But, you know, we're already, and I think the beauty of how we work and we're also boxing, we don't just do our own thing with our own boxes and our own shows. We're quite happy to work with um, lots of other promoters. You know, we're in partnership with the Warrens on the, the, the London shows. Um, we'll maybe sort of partner with some other people on other shows in other locations. Um, and, you know, that just creates more opportunity because it gives you a bigger pool of boxers that can put our guys against their guys. They're all, you know, we, we've got really good relationships and happy to work with all the other promoters, the other managers. It just gives us a bigger pool of boxers that, so we can just, you know, rather than just have a card full of home fighters, home fighters against journeymen, we can get more and more of these 50-50s on, which we really enjoy putting on. They work for us. They work for the crowds because it's more entertaining. It works for the boxers, gives them more opportunity. So, yeah, absolutely. It's going to be more and more uh, part of fights this year. Uh, you know, our stable, first and foremost, we're going to be building that up. Warrens of North, the Warrens as well have got some really good, good calibre. They've made some really nice new signings this year. So, um, yeah, you know, it's going to be a lot of, lot of big titles. You know, British and Commonwealth is, is where we need to be at that kind of level pushing on. You know, you don't have necessarily have the budget for the mainstream world titles. You know, we're not going to bit around the bush. You know, we we don't have BT Sport, Sky, Zone, that kind of money to go and put the big world title fights on the main the mainstream ones. You know, because you're talking minimum of hundreds of thousands of of, of, of purses of costs and things, and you can't generate that with about a big TV contract. But we're nipping at the heels of these guys. You know, so we're with the Box Nations and the. Uh, Middle East muddy and stuff, you know, you're, you're up there with the, you know, the British title fights and the Commonwealth title fights, and it's good for the boxers, it gives them more opportunity. So, you know, this year, it'd be interesting to see. We fast forward twelve months and we sit down and have a review of 2023. I suspect, knowing how we are, Jared, and how we've worked and our sort of mentality, this is going to be an awful lot of year of first for us as well. No, definitely. Um, and what would you say would be a successful 2023 then, just from the outset as we are at the moment? Well, to be there, like we, like I said, sort of sit there next year and say, yeah, great. I'm not going to put necessarily a number of shows on because I don't want to just target volume because I just want to make quality. I want to be able to look back and everyone see a Fight Town brand on a on a on a on a poster and think, yeah, great. That was a great. That's a great show. I know it's going to be a great show. You no, know, without even knowing who the people who are on it. You know, we we you know. Boxing is a business. We've got to get the numbers right. No one talks about it. Uh, but, you know, we have a, as any small hall show without the TV money, you've got to rely on the ticket sales. And we've got like a, a high percentage of any of the sales of a show comes from the boxers' self generated ticket sales. You know, and there's a percentage of income which comes from direct, you know, walk ins, direct sales, sponsorship. Those numbers over the last sort of 12, 18 months have really increased nicely for us. And we've got like a target. To, to not be so reliant on the box of ticket sales and to get the, the other income increasing. And that, that worked really well last year. We, we sort of exceeded where we needed to be on that number. So I want to look back in sort of 12 months and think, yeah, with that, that was, we've done that. Um, that's going to help the shows. It's going to help more bring revenue in, more revenue we've got. We can put it on the production. We can put it in purses, bigger fights. You know, I want to be able to look back and, and have an awful lot of first, have again some new locations and have some really big title fights. No, I think it's going to be a great year. Let's uh let's move on to the public vote winners. Right, okay. I think I gave a couple of spoilers away already earlier on, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> um, I think what we did see is a huge amount of votes come in. We saw a huge yeah. amount of uh, views on those videos as well. And they were across mm, all the platforms. Great to see, yeah. Yeah. Um, once we totaled up those votes, I can tell you that the best ring walk went to Lewis Roberts. Ah, no surprise there. You know. Local boy, um, young lad, really unassuming, but when he starts going to fight mode, it's a different Lewis Roberts. He's, they call him El Gordito, which is a Mexican for fat mouse. I think he's an amateur. He came in a couple of pounds over on a weigh-in. They called him the fat, little fat mouse. So that sort of stuck with him. So he comes in with a sombrero. As a, with a, this time they're wielding a mariachi band. And, you know, he's um, his mum's got a little stall at the venue selling these um, uh, sombreros. Or, you know, just covering the cost. So, you know, I'm stood in the ring while the ring walks up and in, and I'm looking out and I can just see silhouettes of, of like the crowd covered in sombreros. He's got all his corner. He comes in the ring, mariachi bands go in, 
you know, there's uh, the sparklers of light. There's, you know, him and his sombrero and his trainers and his corners all got like sombreros on. Crowd's going absolutely ballistic with all this Mexican music. Well, fantastic ring walk. I mean, what I said it touched on earlier, boxing's a business. It's no good just being a good boxer. At this sort of stage in their careers, they've got to get people more, they've got to get people to know who they are. And by selling themselves, making themselves a product, not just about being good in the ring. Because, you know, lots of boxers can fall down on that. They've got to get everyone to know who they are. Um, and the more people come in to see them, it gives them that lift in the ring, you know, you could you could just see them soaking it up on the stage before they did the ring entrance. Um, you know, it's great to see. But yeah, absolutely a worthy winner. But I will say Max mentioned to Max Mudway as well. Maximus and Max Mudway, as they call him, because he comes in with the, you know, out of the gladiator, the mask on, the sort of like all the Roman centurion. He sort of arms out stretched out to his side. Are you not entertained? And it's just fantastic the you know the the music he chooses the um uh absolutely brilliant but you know fast up behind them as well you know Chubb Hadry with the Afghan warrior with all that you know they they've got it right they know what to do but you know Chubbsy Lewis Roberts worthy winner no I think yeah we had some great ring walks this year with the mariachi band I don't think I've ever heard a mariachi band playing in between rounds either which was quite fun too <laughs> it's quite fun I don't know what I was sat there at ringside turning my head and watching them. And it just sort of, it just gave it a sort of a bit of a lift, gave the crowd a little bit of a lift. It's a bit different, isn't it? But, you know, good on Lewis Roberts. 100%. Um, I will just stress uh, to everybody, these votes are the public vote winners, not chosen by Nielsen Boxing. I just wanted to drop yeah. that in. Mm -hmm. um, debut of the year by Reynolds. Yeah, one expecting that. Comes in and stops the journeyman in his, in his debut. So, um, uh, great. You know, what, what can you say more than that? You know, there's... Uh, um, KO win on live TV. Does it get any better than that? Absolutely. So good on him. You know we're still working with Bo and uh, and his team, um, or Julian and that for for this year. Some big plans for him. But what a brilliant start for him. You know, and he was just buzzing. I think his um his wife partner was there that night, and they had a. I think it was a we had a picture of his uh, newborn baby. I think six weeks old, seven weeks old. The youngest person we'd ever had at one of our boxing shows, I believe. Um, and, you know, mum and baby were there. You know, so what a night for the whole family. So good on him. Um, and just to mention as well, I think it was that close that he beat Georgie Ellis by two votes. Well, right. Well, yeah. Right. You know, Georgie Ellis, he's, um, you know, we've got an agreement. We've got an agreement to work with him this year. And, um, and he's just like a real talent, isn't he? He just looked class, he looked cool, you know, debut at York Hall. You know, I'm not surprised to hear, you know, he he just looked, he looks the real deal. Obviously, there's a long way to go for these guys at this stage of their career, but, um, you know, yeah, look really good. No, definitely. Right, I know everybody goes on about the sweet science and everything else. A lot of people come to boxing for the knockouts. Yeah, don't they? That's why everyone loves the heavyweights as well, isn't it? They just love the excitement and the thrill and, you know, you can watch a, a 10 round toe to toe fight, but the knockouts, it's just adds the excitement, doesn't it? And sometimes, you, you know, you can nearly have the knockouts is enough, but the actual KO wins are always the, the ice on the cake, aren't they? They're just some great ones. What do we get? Yeah, it's definitely one we touched on earlier. Obviously, the viral sensation of a knockout that was James Hawley. Well, yeah, crikey. I mean, um, Brim Wayne report is a really durable guy. He's been around a long, long time. James Hawley's been out for quite a while was fighting heavier than his normal weight class as well. So that fight didn't have knockout written over it at all, at all. But he caught him and there was that sort of just a few seconds that um, the referee didn't do anything wrong, got in there as quick as he could. But James Hawley caught him and he was like, Brim was out on his feet. Then another couple of punches come in, referee straight in there, but he was just gone. Um, how he stayed up, I don't know. But um, so that, you know, Got got the footage of that, and that was online and viral. That's uh, I don't know what the last count was, but it was tens tens of thousands. It's not hundreds of thousands, isn't it? But yeah, um, it went great six. walkout. Yeah. Sorry, say that again. What was it? Sorry, I think it went to six figures in the end. So yeah, over a hundred thousand views. How oh, brilliant! Yeah, Brim was fine actually, which is all good to know. Checked in the change room afterwards. He was absolutely fine. He just it's just one of those things. Not not no long term damage at all. 
Um, James Hall is absolutely buzzing, and we're working with him again this year. So uh, along with you know, um, he's a really you know really good good talent. So uh, a worthy winner for that. Now, you know, we've had a lot a lot of good knockouts, but that one you know, hundred thousand plus viral on socials. Yeah, yeah, a very worthy winner that in my view. Definitely stands out. Now we'll throw a bit of um, a bit of a compliment over to Kyle's way. Mm-hmm. He definitely matches them hard. And I think it's something that's really contributed to the growth um, is having those exciting fights. And we've had upset of the year, and that was Lee Connolly. Yeah, against Jake Price. Now, that wasn't in the script. You know, Jake Price pretty good amateur. Um, you don't go in against people like Lee Connolly, who's on, you know, pushing nearly 100 fights, and expect to sort of um, ex- expect to lose on a on a fight like that. And, and, and yet, he... They did, you know, so um, Lee Conley, credit to him, but it just shows the matching. We, we've, you know, we see it and we've spoken about it quite a lot. You know, we're, we're signing boxers and working with boxers and they've got, you know, and if they're good enough, they're good enough. If they're not, they're going to be found out. So, you know, you hear it a lot when, um, you know, we're asking for opponents for some of our boxers and they're like, oh no, oh no, it's a bit too hard. Oh no, you know, we were, we were trying to develop him. And it was like nine and oh, ten and oh, we were trying to develop him. Um, you know, so we just think you've got to roll the dice. And I say credit, like as he's touched on, Charles, credit to Kyle. You know, there, these there could be other old school promoters who think, well, you know, you can got prolong these guys' career and stuff. I don't think this day and age we've got time for that. I don't think the crowds are interested in ten and oh against the padded record against you know, losing opposition. So, and we, we say to these journeymen, you know, you let your hands go. You come and have a good night. You know, you, do, you, know, you just put it on him, you know, because if, if these prospects are good enough, they're going to get through it. But if they're not, they're going to get found out. And Lee Connolly was one of those who did the finding out, you know. So, uh, credit to him for that. Um, I think to sort of say he's retired now, 99 fights. I'm surprised he didn't just quickly get the 100 in. But um, 99, he's done. Great servant to the game. He's... Uh, you know, blooded a lot of um, prospects and um, done a great job for for, for boxing. So uh, happy retirement, Lee. And, um, you know, good time to stop. Everything's all still sharp and faculty's, you know, all intact and that. So good on him. Yeah, I think we had Lee on quite a bit last year as well. So, yeah, all the best to Lee. Yeah. Um, next, we move on to title win of the year. We had quite a few title fights last year and I'm sure we're going to have more this year. But the winner was Aaron Sutton. Yeah, great fight. You know, he's a uh, Chris Sanaga trained and managed, and we had him on against Danny Shannon in the southern area, vacant southern area, uh, middleweight. Now, that was a big step up for Aaron. I hadn't really fought anybody of any sort of caliber at that stage, just fought sort of some development fights. You know, going against Danny Shannon, he's been around a little bit, but was really up for this. It was a big opportunity for him, you know, the winner. Then he stopped pushing on to, you know, you win a southern area, these area titles are great for getting you a shout at English and then moving on up. So for Danny Shannon, this is a big roll of the dice. He knew he was up against it, but him and his team, they they came to winners in fantastic shape. Aaron Sutton, very cool, very calm, no big amateur background. I think it was just a bit of um, white collar, a bit of martial art or something like that, you know, but you wouldn't know. He just very cool, very calm, very collected. Um, and he just dominated that fight. But it was, you know, entertaining fight, great fight. Great win for Aaron, and that's going to open some big doors for him. I know Chris has um, got some bigger titles in mind for him now, but um, you know that's it. We've, we've had lots of title fights, and we'll have a lot more this year. But that was a real highlight, actually, and I think he's a worthy winner. Actually, you know that was a great fight, great fight. No, yeah, he looked great on the night, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he picks up another couple of titles this year as well. Mm. Mm, absolutely, uh, fight of the year. I think we pulled the numbers and it was a lot of fights we had last year. But the winner in the end was Dujon Martin. You know, that's my favourite. I think I've spoken about that before. Is um, You know, there were some other fights where there was a lot more on the line. There were bigger titles. There was more rivalry. There was more people in the, in the, in the, you know, in the, in the venue. But for me, that was a, a great fight. I, I sit there at ringside and just enjoy the boxing. You know, it's, it's great to be working in a sport I love. And that fight was just great, toe-to-toe. I think I touched on it earlier, didn't I? You know, at the end of the fight, it was so close or oh, difficult. I thought Dujon Nick, you know, the decision was right. But, you know, the, the, the 
uh, Martin's corner didn't really complain about it. So I think it was a fair decision, but it was really tight, really close. And it was just a great fight. Two technical guys, two technical boxers, fit, great condition, a lot at stake. And, um, you know, for both boxers. And you could tell it was like a world title fight for him in a small hall. So, you know, and so great, absolutely worthy winner for me. But, you know, we've had some great fights as well. McGann Brennan was a great fight, wasn't it? Just entertaining. You know, Brennan had him wobbled a couple of times and um, uh, and then McGann goes and finishes him. Again, Bellotti and Dean Dodge, Southern Area. What a great fight, great caliber of boxers and two of those. Some of these area title fights are better than some of these big ones on the undercard you see on TV. We should see far more of them because there's some really good boxing. You know, there's no easy fights when you get to these area title fights. So, um, you know, but uh, Dijon Martin fight of the year yeah the worthy winner in my view as well so my personal favorite we had a lot of fights last year really enjoyed that fight no brilliant i think um i liked mcgann brennan but everybody went with dijon martin i think it was very close between them mcgann brennan was a fun one because uh i think if you're a betting man there's always great odds on both boxers to be knocked down and one to win by ko so yeah. that was definitely exciting but no there's no arguments with that one well, I mean, if you looked at their records leading into that, I think, um, I can't remember exactly, but I think um, Martin had sort of like stopped with the last four by stoppage. Dijon has stopped the last couple by stoppage. You know, you thought that might have been, had a stoppage all over it. You could have had an argument for either fighter and it goes to a, a 10 round sort of 10 round battle. Absolutely brilliant. Put it to both guys. Definitely. Right. And the final award of the year is the fighter of the year. As I said, this is a public vote. So there was no surprise that Jordan Flynn picked this one up. <laughs> well, he just uh, fills venues, doesn't he? He's absolutely uh, a huge following. Um, trained and managed by Kev Mitchell. You know, trains over at Matching Gym in um, Essex. You know, great following, great amateur. So, you know, um, he's got, got it all. Sort of talks well, looks good, can deliver in the ring, really entertaining to watch, easy to work with. And he's got, you know, great great backing behind him but you know just sells a, a massive amount he's like a, a version of Johnny Fisher on the tickets you know he just fills these places up of course if you fill in these places up the atmosphere is immense you know having him on as a main event so uh, worthy um, worthy winner of fight of the year as well but um, you know there they, they can be so many names on you know in that short list of fight of the year for us but uh, God, God, that, that's a tough pick. I, you know, if you were to ask me to pick, God, I'd have to give that some time, you know. But so, but Jordan, I, you've got no, you know, no qualms about that, you know. Great part of the year. Yeah, I think I'll just run quickly through the shortlist for that one. We obviously had Conor Gray, who sort of, you know, he picked up I think five fights in one year. It's a yeah. big achievement. Jack McGann, obviously having that big knockout win, and then being the rooftop in his home city, which I think. I saw an interview where he said that it was the first time he'd fought at home for 10, 12 years, something like that. So right, it was a big, right. big achievement for him. Um, and you can't really go past Jordan Dujon as well, who, let's be fair, had three 50-50s in one year, um, came from obscurity to, you know, finishing off the year with a title. Yeah, absolutely. That's a crack and short list. Just shows the depth and the quality of the cards that we're putting on. Hopefully we get to next year and we... We have the same sort of problems of like, uh, you know, who, who to put on a short list. And we see, but I, I think, you know, we had an awful lot of fights last year and it just shows that the quality that we had, that we're sort of putting these sort of names and these sort of fights uh, are in the mix. You know, certainly 2023 is going to be more of the same, I'm sure. Yeah. And then finally, just run through the numbers from uh, last year. I know we had a post on it, but three live TV channels, five different venues, 12 shows. 17 knockouts, 90 fights, 127 boxers, and 400.